I'm Yasuhiro Matsuda. I'm mainly uh, uh, conducting the research on uh, the cross-strait relations uh, and uh, uh, within uh, a part uh, as a part of the international politics in uh, East Asia. And uh, today's topic is the strategic impact of the Taiwan issue on the uh, U.S.-Japan uh, US alliance. And there are many uh, uh, you know, parts uh, uh, to be discussed. Uh, but I, I would like to uh, talk uh, these four uh, issues. Uh, and uh, uh, Taiwan issue in the f future uh, East Asia, there are some scenarios about, uh, uh, you know, China's use of force and U.S., uh, you know, abundance and uh, defense of Taiwan. And also, uh, you know, the recent uh, development of uh, uh, the Sino-U.S. strategic rivalry. Uh, some people say that it's a new type of Cold War. Uh, anyway, uh, the Cold War was not uh, uh, called Cold War in the beginning of the Cold War. So we don't know uh, where we are heading to, toward. So it is uh, uh, a very uh, important uh, new trend. Well, uh, as we have just heard, uh, there are many, many uh, scary uh, discourses around uh, around Taiwan issue, and uh, the recently, uh, the many uh, occasions, uh, in many occasions, uh, major uh, powers have uh, mentioned uh, the importance of peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait. It started in the uh, U.S.-Japan uh, two plus two meeting, and uh, the summit meeting uh, between uh, Biden and Suga also followed soon. And the U.S. ROK also did it, uh, G7 meeting, summit meeting, and U.S. Uh, uh, Australia, uh, 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 2 plus 2 also followed. And many uh, major powers uh, agreed on the, uh, the importance of peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait. And every time uh, the, uh, this kind of an announcement is done, China uh, sent aircraft, uh, military aircraft, uh, into the uh, Taiwan's uh, 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 identification uh, zone, so um, and pressuring Taiwan uh, in military uh, uh, militarily. So uh, tension over uh, Taiwan Strait is uh, it seems heightened, and uh, the discourse of uh, Taiwan Strait is also uh, becoming very, very, very tense. Uh, I think basically it started in uh, you know January second and nineteen. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2019. Xi Jinping said that we will never renounce the use of force against Taiwan. Uh, you know the the words uh, use of force was not uh, you know token since uh, 2005 when anti secession law uh, passed in China. At that time, uh, the Hu Jintao administration. Uh, began to use non-peaceful means. It means much wider range, you know, and including uh, economic sanctions and so on. And after that, the people in China, especially the leadership, has, has never ever used the use of force. But uh, Xi Jinping changed it, you know, because uh, he witnessed uh, the, the weakness of the DPP uh, administration because the Taiwan government has lost its uh, lost the, the local government uh, local elections seriously in in 2018 so uh, at that time Tsai Ing-wen was very weak and uh, 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 Xi Jinping found that there was a uh, huge opportunity to take back Taiwan um, you know later on the military pressure pressure uh, uh, became bigger and bigger and uh, uh, recently, Tsai Ing-wen said that the, the, if it's a threat of China, it's increasing every day, you know. Uh, so um, air uh, uh, and uh, the na naval field and also uh, hybrid uh, threat, uh, fake news and everything, uh, all of those uh, threats coming from uh, China is 
you know, increasing every day. And uh, uh, although uh, Biden's uh, words were, uh, you know, corrected uh, later, but uh, President Biden has said uh, twice uh, about uh, uh, U.S. defense on uh, Taiwan because, you know, yes, we have a commitment to do that. It, it, that means defense of Taiwan. And uh, actually, uh, U.S. Uh, policy toward uh, the cross-strait relations is uh, strategic ambiguity. Uh, it means that uh, never clearly uh, is saying that uh, whether the uh, U.S. Uh, would defend Taiwan or not. But it's not totally clear, uh, unclear. Totally, uh, it's not totally ambiguous. It means that letting uh, China believe that uh, U.S. would defend Taiwan. You know, that's what deter deterrence is all about. And on the other hand, letting Taiwan believe that uh, U.S. may not defend Taiwan. That's, that's why, uh, uh, that is why uh, Taiwan should not provoke China. Taiwan should purchase more weapons from the United States to defend itself. So uh, it is ambiguous, but it's not a, a perfect um, um, ambiguity. It is a, a kind of a, uh, uh, dual deterrence, you know, uh, deter China to attack Taiwan because U.S. may uh, defend Taiwan and uh, uh, deter Taiwan's uh, provocation uh, to, uh, toward uh, uh, China because U.S. may not defend Taiwan. So that, that's the situation. So basically, U.S. Uh, strategic ambiguity is to deter China. So, uh, you know, so Biden administration, uh, uh, President Biden said twice, uh, he, he slipped his tongue twice, but it is uh, contributing to enhance <laughs> the deterrence towards China. So it, it is, it can be a, a part of strategic ambiguity still, even now. Uh, this is a very uh, uh, kind, uh, explanation to uh, U.S. Uh, policy making, but anyway, uh, 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 it is uh, still an strategic ambiguity. And uh, uh, Tony Blinken said uh, in a very ambiguous way, because he is a, a you know uh, 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 professional diplomat. So we have uh, allied nations would be prepared to take action if uh, China uses force against Taiwan. So it's still ambi ambiguity. You know, uh, some actions should should be taken. Uh, could be a, a diplomatic effort, uh, could be a use of force or logistical support to the U.S. forces, but uh, this is uh, the right, uh, you know, uh, right way uh, uh, to uh, uh, do its uh, strategic ambiguity. And even Japan, there are some, uh, uh, you know, discourses. And Shinzo Abe quite recently uh, mentioned about a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would constitute a significant threat to Japan and therefore an emergence for, see, for the Japan-U.S. alliance. So uh, attacking on, uh, on Taiwan means attacking on Japan and attacking on Japan on means uh, attacking on U.S. Jap uh, Japan alliance. So don't do that. This is a kind of warning. You know. He didn't mention that Japan would defend Taiwan or not. Some other political figures said so, but Abe used to be uh, was, was, uh, he, he is a former prime minister. He knows what is the red line. He was just warning China. So these, uh, you know, uh, discourses uh, are really, you know, kind of scary. You know, tension is heightening. And, uh, but we have to take a look at what kind of uh, structure, what kind of institutions we have, and uh, what kind of restrictions we have. You know, because you know, discourses, you know, or announcements, political uh, discourse uh, uh, are very interesting. And, uh, for example, the Japanese uh, famous person warns uh, China. And Chinese, uh, 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 you know, spokesperson of the uh, foreign ministry, you know, uh, uh, rolls back and, and so on. That's a very interesting thing. But we have to know what is the, the institution and the uh, structure. Uh, U.S.-Japan alliance, 
exist because uh, those nations, two nations' uh, interests are overlapping. But uh, the roles and missions are asymmetric. Uh, Japan is a shield, and the uh, uh, US is a, a kind of a, a spear. So, so offensive and defensive, that's uh, the, the, uh, the different roles. Uh, because uh, Japan is, uh, Japan's capability and uh, uh, roles and missions are restricted by the uh, Japan's uh, con uh, constitution. Uh, and uh, Japan has very little offensive capabilities, uh, such as ballistic missiles, uh, long-range uh, bombers, and uh, uh, nuclear weapons, and uh, uh, also Japan has limited capability of, you know, uh, uh, attacking uh, by uh, you know, cruise missiles and also uh, some uh, short-range bomb bombers, uh, F-16 type bombers, that's called F-2, but um, very limited. And uh, uh, Japan has uh, no training uh, to, you know, to send uh, those uh, uh, you know, assets to other uh, countries' military, uh, you know, territory, and do the, the, that kind of uh, offensive operations. So basically, Japan's de defense is this. And uh, uh, under the, uh, you know, well, the U.S.-Japan alliance, Japan's uh, defense is written in the Article Five, and the maintenance of the international peace and security in the Far East is written in the Article Six. So. Japanese self-defense forces uh, are uh, in charge of Japan's defense and also uh, uh, in charge of the maintenance of the international peace and security in the Far East. And the U.S. is providing uh, offensive capabilities and uh, Japan is providing the shield. So this is the, the basic structure and also uh, both Japan and the United States uh, having a dilemma of alliance. Uh, one is entanglement, the other is abandonment. Uh, because this is an alliance, and the, the most of the uh, uh, interests are overlapped, but not necessarily the, the, the completely same. So let, let us uh, ask these questions. What, how does Taiwan's case affect the US, uh, Japan-US alliance? How would Japan and the United States each respond in the event China resorts to non-peaceful means such as the exercise of military power to compel Taiwan's uh, policy change. What dilemma will each face? Uh, should the United States choose to abandon Taiwan by reducing the current degree of engagement in East Asia? How will its uh, 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 alliance with Japan change? Now people uh, are talking about how to defend Taiwan, but abandon Taiwan also uh, uh, was a big, big topic. And uh, it may occur in the future uh, based on the change in the uh, international uh, relations or U.S. domestic politics, you know, if uh, uh, extremely, uh, you know, isolationist uh, president, uh, you know, is produced in the United uh, is, uh, is elected in the United States, and uh, uh, the most of the American people feel fatigue over the, you know domestic issues and uh, another war in the Middle East and uh, may, 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 may not intervene uh, in the, the Far Eastern issue. Or, or a, a, anyway, so I have uh, uh, I got uh, these questions. Well, uh, Taiwan issue in the future uh, 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 East Asia. There are some brain exercise. Um, I uh, tried to you know, uh, uh, use uh, this kind of uh, figure to to predict uh, future scenarios. This is not a, actually this is not a prediction. This is a kind of brain exercise. In the present, what kind of future image do we have now, and 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 uh, how what kind of uh, effect will be uh, 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 you know uh, will be uh, produced by the future image. Now, that's very uh, important. And uh, in the past and in the present, we, we have uh, different four scenarios in the future. Uh, for example, uh, it's, it depends on the uh, future Sino-US relations. 
uh, U.S. maintains its status quo or, or even develops its uh, influence over the region, or U.S. declines, U.S. retreats from the region. That's the, the horizontal you know, uh, uh, line. The, the vertical line is China becomes much more cooperative or much more hegemonic and unilateral. So if U.S. Uh, maintains its power and influence over the region, and uh, China becomes very much cooperative, then uh, the region uh, uh, becomes de facto a G2. You know, uh, almost all the things uh, can be solved by the both nations. For example, North Korean issue and uh, uh, other uh, you know, pirates or, uh, or any other issues. And uh, even in the outer regional uh, issues, such as Iran, nuclear issues, and other issues, uh, US and China can cooperate each other. Then it becomes a kind of G2. And G2 scenario was discussed uh, during the beginning of the uh, Obama administration. Uh, it, it's gone already. But uh, this is a kind of a, a brain uh, exercise. You know. And uh, if uh, US declines, and uh, uh, China becomes very cooperative and liked by everybody else in the, in the region, it's going to be on the scenario of independence of Asia. Uh, you know, hey, uh, China is back, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, Japan, Korea, and other uh, countries and regions uh, will uh, follow China because China is very good, you know, cooperative and uh, very lightning, enlightening. And uh, in that uh, case, uh, the region doesn't need uh, the United States. It's an independence of Asia. Good, goodbye, Americans. <laughs> you know? uh, but if uh, uh, China becomes much more hegemonic and disliked by the region, and the U.S. declines, the new Chinese world order, you know, it's a very uh, uh, you know, authoritarian order uh, of Asia. And uh, uh, the other uh, countries have. Uh, have nothing but to follow China, although everybody dislikes China. So it's a kind of new Chinese world order. The current situation is uh, U.S. still maintains status quo, but uh, China is seen as a hegemonic, more and more growing hegemonic uh, uh, country. That's uh, uh, called U.S.-China strategic competition. I think that, uh, you know, basically, uh, the current uh, future image is this, you know, the lower uh, right-hand side, right? So, uh, uh, you know, if U.S. W withdraw from the region, you know, then the, the whole calculation will be changed. If U.S. maintains its power and, uh, you know, uh, uh, in interest here, uh, in this region, then, then maybe the right-hand side. And China is becoming, uh, is, seen as, uh, uh, is seen more and more hegemonic recently. So uh, basically, uh, we are uh, living in this, the, the lower uh, right-hand side uh, world. Okay? So in this scenario, uh, then if uh, China moves toward much more hegemonic way and uh, uh, trying to quote unquote solve Taiwan issue by coercive means, uh, bluntly speaking, uh, by use of force, then what would happen and what uh, would be the impact on, on the US-Japan uh, alliance? So far, this situation is deterred. It doesn't happen. It won't happen in a uh, future, uh, with at least within a couple of years. <laughs> oh, I, I might say that, uh, you know, within five to ten years. But um, actually, because China has never renounced the possibility of use of force against Taiwan. Even Deng Xiaoping uh, has said that we will never renounce the use of force. Because we, if we renounce the use of force, Taiwan uh, uh, will immediately go independence. Uh, so we will preserve uh, the possibility of the use of force as a, the last, the very last resort. 
So even in the Deng Xiaoping's period, much more peaceful uh, unification uh, uh, period, uh, China has never uh, uh, renounced. And Xi Jinping has bluntly revived the words of you know, use of force uh, when uh, everybody uh, you know, witnessed uh, Taiwan become very weak. So it is a real concern. Okay. You know, there is another brain exercise. China's uh, use of force against Taiwan could happen when China and Taiwan both fail to avoid escalating a political crisis and when China and the United States are under a uh, fierce strategic competition. And this is quite imaginable. We can Im imagine this situation, right? And uh, 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 what would happen? You know, this is a totally uh, 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 a kind of a hypothetical uh, situation. What would happen? You know, one day uh, you, uh, China attacks Taiwan. What would happen? U.S. may take unilateral action. Uh, maybe yes, uh, U.S. is capable to do, do so. Or, or, but U.S. forces in Japan have restrictions. Uh, if the, the, uh, the operation is uh, huge scale, uh, Japan has a right to say no. Uh, U.S. forces on Japan are, are not free to do anything. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a weak point in uh, the U.S.-Japan uh, alliance, so, which uh, could be a target uh, by, by China. I, I, I said the secret, <laughs> but anyway, uh, anyway that, that's the, the reality of the uh, you know, U.S.-Japan uh, alliance. If Japan's, you know, uh, Japanese government is uh, critically weak and uh, uh, committed not to do any kind of uh, military uh, actions or uh, uh, even a logistical support to the United States. Uh, totally peaceful, uh, pacifist uh, government. Then uh, it might say no, theoretically. theoretically. But uh, usually we, when we say theoretically there is a possibility, it means that Practically no, you know, uh, Japan would say yes. Uh, uh, in most of the uh, cases, Japan would say yes. But in this situation, Japan. Uh, as for Japan, this is a typical case of entanglement. You know, when Taiwan is attacked by China, and U.S. said, "We, we, 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 are, we I'm going to defend Taiwan." In that case, Japan will have to support. Uh, the United States and uh, blame China and don't use the force, then Japan may become China's target, right? So this is a typical, you know, uh, case of entanglement. So is there any possibility that Japan will come to rescue Taiwan in place of the United States? Uh, you know, uh, as, as you said, you know, you know, more than half of the Taiwanese people believe that uh, Japan would save Taiwan uh, if <laughs> Taiwan is attacked. Uh, and, and, uh, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not formulated in a day. 20 years ago, it was the same, actually. <laughs> and uh, uh, I personally have said uh, uh, this is not the case repeatedly to my Taiwanese friend, uh, but uh, uh, most of the uh, people in Taiwan would never trust me. Uh, because there are so many restrictions uh, uh, in Japan. Uh, you know, what Japan uh, could, uh, can do is, to f uh, is firstly, diplomatically, uh, uh, you know, uh, blame China and try to support Taiwan and uh, uh, also uh, doing some uh, logistical support to the United States. So. Uh, uh, the U.S.-Japan uh, alliance has experienced a kind of a playing a role of deterrence in 2005 when the uh, cross-rate relations uh, soured based on the, the you know, rivalry between the Chen shui administration and Hu Jintao administration. And at that time, the, the, the danger of war was also very big. So, uh, U.S. and Japan uh, uh, standing together and mention 
about encouraging the peaceful resolution of issues uh, concerning the Taiwan Strait through dialogue. And China get really mad about this. And now it is a kind of a refrain of at that time. Because uh, in Taiwan, uh, same DPP government is ruling the, uh, ruling the island. And also, uh, you know, China under Xi Jinping is very, very aggressive about the issue. OK, let, let me uh, uh, explain what would Japan do, what can Japan do uh, in details. For example, Japan has to evacuate uh, its own people both in Taiwan and in mainland China, because war has happened today. And it's a huge burden for the Japanese government. Uh, you know, there is no recent uh, 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 figure of a Japanese citizens uh, who are staying in uh, Taiwan and mainland China. I think that less than this, because of the pandemic. A lot of Japanese uh, went back to their own country. but. Um, you know, more than uh, 20,000 people are living in Taiwan, and more than 100,000 people are living in China. And uh, especially in the southern part of China, uh, will become a battlefield, because Taiwan will also retaliate. So those people have to uh, escape. And, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, quite impossible for Japan to send um, uh, air self-defense uh, force uh, carrier uh, to uh, China and evacuate those people. You know, China will reject it. Uh, you know, frankly speaking, uh, they will become China's hostage. Uh, we have seen uh, China's uh, hostage diplomacy quite frequently uh, when the bilateral relations sours, uh, such, such as you know, China-Canadian, China-Australian uh, cross-strait relation. Sino-Japanese relations. Uh, in those cases, uh, 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 other uh, uh, citizens happen to stay in uh, China, uh, suddenly become hostage, and uh, will be released when the relations uh, ameliorated. So this kind of thing uh, occurs. So 100,000 people uh, in China, a very good number. <laughs> to control China, uh, Japanese government. So uh, it is a, a serious burden for the Japanese government. And also, uh, how to rescue uh, Japanese citizens in Taiwan. That's also a heavy burden. If Japanese government uh, makes a decision to send uh, uh, self-defense forces, uh, ships and, uh, uh, you know, cargoes to Taiwan, China will see it as intervene, intervention, military intervention to Taiwan. And this, is, uh, this could become a trigger of uh, China to attack Japan. So it's a really uh, difficult situation. And uh, Beijing may allow uh, Japan to do so, in, and in exchange uh, uh, to do nothing stay calm and do nothing, never support uh, US forces. So it's not that uh, uh, easy situation. You know? so, uh, so this is the first burden, uh, first restriction Japan has. And uh, uh, as for Japan, as I said before, uh, Japan has a right to say no about US military forces uh, deploying to, to the uh, Taiwan Strait because it's a huge scale. It's not training. Uh, whether to allow American counterparts to, to use military bases in Japan, that theoretically exists. This question theoretically ex exists. But if Japan says no, US-Japan alliance will collapse in a day. So this is a very difficult decision uh, for, for the Japanese government. Upon China's use of force against Taiwan, the U.S. troops uh, in Japan and elsewhere uh, may be mobilized to, in accordance with the Taiwan Relations Act. So, uh, you know, uh, U U.S. has a legitimate uh, legal basis. And uh, uh, U.S. Uh, may, uh, you know, can do anything 
uh, uh, by the Taiwan Relations Act. Taiwan Relations Act is the source of the uh, strategic ambiguity. It is written in, in a very ambiguous way. Uh, U.S. government and uh, uh, the Congress can uh, should take uh, an appro appropriate, uh, appropriate action. Appropriate action. What's the appropriate action? <laughs> if uh, if uh, the measure is appropriate, uh, U.S. can do anything. Right? So this is the strategic ambiguity. Right? And uh, Article 6 of the Japan-U.S. Uh, 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 Security uh, Treaty states that uh, for the purpose of the contributing to the security of Japan and the maintenance of the international peace and security in the Far East, the United States of America is granted to use uh, by its land, air, and naval forces on fa or for facilities and areas, areas of Japan. Well, so what would Japan do? I think that, uh, you know, U.S.-Japan alliance is uh, critically important for Japan's security. So, and if uh, you know, uh, a full invasion to Taiwan is allowed, uh, I think that next target will, you know, China won't stop uh, only on stop on Taiwan. Senkaku may be the next target. Or imagine what would happen after uh, the, the merge of Taiwan by military means, not peaceful means. That is going to be the uh, total collapse of the international order uh, in, in, in East Asia. So this is an ultimate choice uh, for, for the Japanese government. And uh, uh, in our uh, common sense, Japan will choose uh, to allow uh, US forces to use uh, Japanese facilities and land uh, land and uh, uh, you know the uh, U.S. bases on Japan, but it's a, it's a tough question. It's a tough choice. Uh, if I were a, a prime minister of Japan, I, I I don't want to see this kind of situation. And uh, uh, the third choice is also very difficult. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, China attacks Taiwan, uh, whether uh, Japan would uh, take it, see it as a situation that will have an important influence on Japan's peace and security. This is a legal uh, uh, you know, uh, notion. It, is, it used to be called a uh, situation surrounding Japan uh, before uh, 2015. But the um, Abe administration passed the, the very uh, comprehensive uh, security uh, legislation in 2015, and it became uh, situation that will have an impact influence on uh, Japan peace and security. It's a kind of tongue twisting words. Uh, S T W H I I J P S. <laughs> so I don't I I don't want to use it. But anyway, this is a situation uh, which may have a very uh, uh, important in, in, uh, impact on Japan's own security. So uh, if uh, Japanese government takes Taiwan contingency or Korean Peninsula contingency or Persian Gulf contingency or whatever. If the contingency uh, gives a strong impact on Japan's security, peace and security, Japan can set up this kind of uh, you know, uh, situation. Uh, and uh, uh, Japan, Japanese forces are allowed to supply the American counterpart live ammunition and other materials. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I'm sorry, this is wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. And weapons too. Uh, 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 live ammunition and other materials, but not weapons. Uh, that, that, that's true. Live ammunition uh, allowed after uh, 2015. Uh, uh, before 2015, uh, live ammunition were not allowed to procure. Look, this is war. And, and the U.S. and Japan are allies, but live ammunitions were not allowed to procure. And most of the American soldiers don't know this. <laughs> you know, this is the reality. But after the, uh, the new legislation in 2015, live ammunitions are allowed to procure uh, to, 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 as a logistical support. So it's a kind of incremental step, incremental uh, changes. Uh, of the uh, Japanese uh, uh, security policy. 
and uh, uh, Jap Japanese forces can uh, allow can be allowed to to evacuate U.S. citizens in Taiwan. There are so many U.S. citizens, more than the Japanese, because a lot of Taiwanese have uh, uh, two passports. So <laughs> there are, you know, the Japanese government has to, if uh, it is uh, determined to do this, you know, and uh, the U.S. Uh, forces may ask the Japanese counterpart to do this, and Japan has to do this anyway. And this is a huge burden. It's a big responsibility, huge burden, right? And the Japanese government will bear its risk of being seen as a de facto enemy state by China by doing this. So, you know, uh, you know, evacuation, allowing U.S. forces to use U.S. bases on Japan, and uh, uh, taking the situation as situation, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, and all these three are extremely difficult, already uh, <laughs> incredibly difficult decision uh, for the Japanese government to do this. So sending aircraft and vessels to defend Taiwan, it's, it's out of imagination, you know, out of imagination. And well, and there is another issue, you know, after 2015 exercise the right of collective defense. You know, the Japanese government uh, has uh, had banned its collective uh, right of uh, 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 the, uh, right of collective uh, self-defense. Uh, this uh, discussion was uh, heating uh, around 2014 and 15. So maybe if you are interested in Japan, maybe you, you may know. This issue, you know, UN Charter allows uh, member countries to to exercise the right of collective def uh, right of self-defense, right? Uh, you know, in the current uh, international uh, uh, order, war fighting to solve the international dispute is illegal. It is not allowed to do so. So only uh, the case of uh, uh, use of force. Uh, for self-defense and international security, uh, uh, you know the UN uh, forces, United Nations forces, fight against the invasion, uh, such as the, the Korean Peninsula, Korean War uh, situation. Those two cases are allowed, and the self-defense uh, right uh, consists of two parts. That is uh, individual self-defense right. It means that, which means that when you are attacked by somebody else you are legitimate to fight back and defend yourself. Right? And the other one is collective self-defense. When your ally or a very important friend is attacked by somebody else and you are not uh, uh, you know, attacked by uh, that country, but you can retaliate and defend your ally or a friend. That is called collective self-defense, right? And all the member states other than Japan were allowed to exercise this right uh, because only Japan restrains this right by the, uh, the uh, traditional uh, interpretation of the Japanese constitution. But Abe administration changed it. So although it's a limited exercise, but, uh, uh, but still uh, Japan can exercise its collective uh, self-defense right. So if U.S. is attacked by somebody else, Japan can retaliate and defend the U.S. And in that case, if U.S. is attacked and the U.S. might be losing or seriously damaging, damaged, then it w becomes a serious uh, uh, you know, uh, impact on Japan's own security, peace and security. Japan can exercise the right of collective self-defense. Actually, I skipped many restrictions. Uh, I, I can't even translate them. <laughs> you know, there are many, many restrictions. Uh, but uh, you know, in principle, Japan can defend the U.S. if the U.S. is attacked. So, uh, uh, you know, in this uh, situation, uh, if uh, Taiwan attack, uh, Taiwan, China attacks Taiwan and the U.S. defends Taiwan and the U.S. is attacked by uh, uh, China, 
and this attack is seriously impacting uh, Japan, Japan can fight. Uh, so it's a kind of a automatic entanglement, you know. But this kind of automatic entanglement structure is the source of deterrence. So it means that if China attacks Taiwan, it may become a war against Taiwan, US, and Japan at the same time. This is a horrible scenario. And mo in most of the cases, we are living in peace. I never mentioned this. Only experts like us know this uh, structure and the restrictions, you know. Because if you talk about this too much, it might become a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? <laughs> But as an expert, because I have been asked this question, oh, if China attacks Taiwan, what would Japan do? I have been asked by many people more than 100 times, and I always, always, you know, answer like this, you know. And recently, uh, uh, a lot of Chinese friends uh, have asked me this question. They are worried about possible war against Taiwan, you know. Cross-rate war is not an easy thing for China as well, uh, because China's peaceful development strategy is deeply connected with the peaceful unification policy uh, with Taiwan. You know, in the 1950s and 70s, uh, Taiwan Strait, uh, you know, uh, the coastal area of the, uh, China was the battlefield. They fought, fought each other, and it was impossible for China to seek prosperity through trade because there was, there was no peaceful uh, environment. So the peaceful environment uh, is the source of the Ch uh, Chinese development. So if China throw out the, uh, throw out, throw out the peaceful unification with, uh, with, with Taiwan, it means that uh, China may or will lose its peaceful uh, environment to develop itself. So it's not an easy, easy choice for China either. We, we have to uh, understand this, right? So a lot of people uh, were asking me. Uh, then I have made this kind of explanation many times. So uh, in sum, it is uh, important to highlight that once Japan gets involved in an emergency over the Taiwan Strait, the crisis has the potential to quickly escalate to an emergency in Japan. This is the structure. Uh, actually, uh, Prime Minister Abe said this public, in public. What he said is correct uh, from the viewpoint of, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, expert. Uh, the reality has never been uh, discussed in the public until recently. All right, but. I, I add this slide. In my view, China's policy, current policy, is not use of force. You know, Xi Jinping has just said that we never uh, renounce the use of force. But he has repeatedly stated that China's, uh, he, 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 he is committed to promote peaceful unification with, China, uh, with Taiwan. Uh, what does it mean? I think that uh, the, 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 the contents of the uh, peaceful unification has changed. Traditional meaning of the peaceful unification is over because it's Deng Xiaoping's version. Deng Xiaoping's version, it's a kind of strategic package. It's not only uh, it's uh, Taiwan policy. It's a package. Establishing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, diplomatic relations and stable and good relation with the United States and the omnidirectional uh, diplomacy, you know, Tao Kuan Yang Hui. It's a you know very uh, famous you know uh, uh, diplomacy, and having good relation with its neighbors, and reform and openness, and reform and openness has to have a peaceful and stable international uh, environment, and political reform. Deng Xiaoping visited the United States and implied that China would go democracy much more free, free country. He saluted uh, to the, the Lincoln, a statue of the Link, uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know. 
he showed that uh, you know, China is, uh, is going to uh, uh, be US friend. Right? And peaceful unification with Taiwan. And a peaceful unification with Taiwan is a prerequisite of the uh, diplomatic relations with the United States. Because the US asked uh, China to solve the uh, Taiwan issue in peaceful manner. Of course, peaceful uh, resolution and peaceful uh, unification are different things. Peaceful resolution theoretically includes peaceful independence of Taiwan, <laughs> if it is a, 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 you know, a resolution. But peaceful unification only has unification. So it's different. But anyway, China has made a pledge to solve the Taiwan issue uh, in peaceful manner. Right? And one country, two systems in, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, one country, two systems. The idea uh, of one country, two system is uh, uh, created for Taiwan. You know, Deng Xiaoping asked Taiwan to, to, to accept this idea uh, for uh, the unification formula, as a for unification formula. But, uh, you know, uh, then President Jiang Jingguo refused it. No contact. Uh, no negotiation, no uh, concession, three no's. So uh, Deng Xiaoping decided to apply uh, this formula to Hong Kong first, because uh, Hong Kong's reversion is coming very closely in 1997. And he announced that uh, Hong Kong's one country, two systems will be very successful. And it, it's going to be a model to apply in Taiwan. So the Taiwanese people will feel safe when they see the success of uh, uh, one country, two systems in Hong Kong. This is the whole package, right? The rest of the world think that Hong Kong is doing very good. It's very re reassurance, right? It's a very good reassurance for the rest of the world. So Deng Xiaoping made a pledge and keep this promise and his successors uh, keeping this promise so that uh, Hong Kong could maintain its special status as a free and open uh, port. And uh, I don't need to say anything about this. Xi Jinping has changed everything. No. Everything. You know, US uh, relations with the US. Now it's a serious rivalry. And uh, uh, you know, war of warrior diplomacy uh, uh, made a lot of the country is uh, angry, and the China's image is getting down and down and down every year, right? And uh, 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 political reform? No, no way, right? Uh, uh, Xi Jinping is run for the third term, maybe becomes the lifelong presidency, right? And uh, peaceful unification? They're, they're pressuring on Taiwan militarily every day, right? And one country's two systems in Hong Kong is gone. It's gone, right? So once this package has been changed greatly, you can't, you can't reverse it in a day, right? Because China has already lost its trust. So this is a very serious situation. But China cannot say that uh, uh, unification by force, because it is deeply re related to, connected to their peaceful development strategy. Or reform and openness. So the new version of peaceful unification is coercive peaceful unification. You know, building uh, enough capability to, to do full invasion to Taiwan and prevent US from, uh, uh, you know, uh, prevent US from intervening uh, the Taiwan Strait and ask Taiwan to surrender. So without killing anyone, without being killing, killed anyone, China can achieve its unification. That's peaceful. Uh, this is a uh, uh, very uh, different peaceful. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a communist uh, definition of peaceful. So um, you know, this is the current situation. I don't think that a use of force would uh, happen uh, anytime soon or in, in a very easy way. Uh, there may be some uh, military provocation or some 
uh, accidental uh, collision may occur, but uh, uh, you know, planned full invasion is not likely to occur uh, because the, uh, the capable is not enough. And also, there is a risk of US intervention. So this is my, my view. But still, we have to think about uh, uh, what would happen if China attacks Taiwan. Okay? Then, uh, you know, because time is quite limited, I, I think I have to speed up. OK, then what about uh, US? US? US is the key uh, player. And if US defends or abandons on Taiwan, what would happen? Uh, it's a kind of a dysfunctional alliance. Uh, U US abandons Taiwan. It seems, you know, uh, for example, uh, uh, for, uh, President Biden says that, oh, we are, we, are, we are committed to do that. Then maybe not. But it's really difficult to say, you know, U.S. may abandon Taiwan. Uh, there, are, there are many reasons. For example, uh, first is that uh, U.S. may take Taiwan as a bargaining card for their own security and other strategic goals. It wa was uh, discussed many years, and it's, it's not dead yet, you know. Uh, when uh, the country faces serious security issue, other uh, you know, countries or other areas may become minor uh, issues. So when the U.S. faces its own serious security issues or uh, more uh, uh, serious uh, uh, interest, Taiwan may become a kind of a, a bargaining card. And second possibility is a kind of a, a, a economic gains. I think that th this, is, uh, uh, this is gone. Uh, but it used to be uh, part of this discussion. Uh, you know, uh, Taiwan is sacrificed because of the uh, economic gains. Actually, this kind of fears also existed uh, in Japan. Japan might be abandoned. You know, G2 situation. You know, but th these two are now uh, basically gone. Or uh, uh, used to be a very serious uh, situation on Taiwan was cancellation or delaying or reduction of arms sales to Taiwan, or draw concessions from China. Oh, to draw concessions from China. It used to be a kind of true or when Obama administration. Uh, 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 during the Obama administration, it was uh, almost virtually uh, a kind of a, you know, uh, uh, mm, kind of a uh, uh, negotiation uh, uh, tools uh, with, with 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 China. Uh, the U.S. administrations were really worried about uh, China China's you know, response because. China will retaliate. China will sanction uh, uh, the United States or s simply stop the other uh, uh, exchanges, such as military exchanges and so on. So when the United States think that those exchanges or other interests uh, are uh, more important, the, uh, you know, the arms sales to Taiwan uh, can be delayed. That was the situation. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, these two possibilities have, uh, you know, advantage and disadvantage for all parties involved. Taking Taiwan as a bargaining card, it's expressed Beijing to reciprocation, re reciprocate in a tangible manner. If Beijing fails to make a com competent offer on North Korea or trade deficits, U.S. might take a hardliner approach in the next round of bilateral trade negotiations as retaliatory measure or announce a scaled arms sales to Taiwan. So uh, U.S. can use this as a, a bargaining chip. So there are many uh, 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 a big uh, you know, criticism inside Taiwan. Don't become U.S. Uh, bargaining chip. That kind of criticism exists. And that is uh, half true. You know, that is half true. 
And uh, uh, if America uh, produces choices of extremely isolationist president and Congress, you know, you know, U.S. may abandon Taiwan. Okay. The third, this is the third case. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, scholars like Charles Glazer uh, say that avoid nuclear confrontation. The U.S. should uh, consider backing away from its uh, commitment to Taiwan. US, U.S. should back off. I think this voice is a minimum now, uh, but U.S. is changeable. Ten years from now, power balance may change, and the U.S. domestic politics may change, and the U.S. may be uh, fatigued uh, with uh, the, another uh, war in the Middle East. That is imaginable, right? So uh, uh, isolationist uh, may uh, emerge. That, that can be possible, right? So uh, in this case, if U.S. doesn't support Taiwan uh, self-defense or is, U.S. doesn't defend Taiwan, it would greatly undermine the credibility of the US, United States as an ally of Japan and South Korea and other allies too. U US would never uh, fight against China because it's a uh, uh, nuclear weapon state. Then what about Russia? Right? So uh, it's, it's going to be a very serious situation. So far, we don't see these uh, situations because what we are witnessing is a kind of linkage politics under the Sino-US strategic rivalry. Because China is challenged very, challenging very harshly. Uh, characteristics of China's challenge under Xi Jinping is overtaking at the curve. Have you ever uh, heard this? One Tao Chao Che. So, you know, if you are uh, racing with other uh, vehicles. When you are accessing the curve, you will slow down usually, right? You will slow down. But uh, China's case is that you speed up and overtake at the curve. This is China's speed. <laughs> this is called China's speed. So both in economic field and security field, China is going to do this. You know, I, I, I take the economic uh, challenge first. Made in China 2025. That is the, the typical case. It's a kind of a speeding and overtaking at the curve because other economies are restrained by the, for example, legal restraint or domestic regulations, WTO regulations. But China can speeding up, purchasing a lot of companies, a lot of technologies from the world, uh, uh, purchasing many crown jury companies from the developed economies and speed up its uh, uh, economy and technology and uh, to become uh, the world factory, the best uh, and strongest world factory in 2025. That was the, the plot. And, and then this uh, plan was uh, se severely damaged by the Trump, Trump administration. It's, it's not going well, but still, uh, China is doing uh, a lot of efforts to do this. And the security challenge is the same. Uh, uh, you know, the, the China's uh, security uh, strategy, the military strategy is what's called A2AD, anti-access uh, and uh, anti-area uh, 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 denial. So, you know, try to deny U.S. intervention in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Far East. But uh, uh, nowadays, we have found uh, more and more uh, nuclear uh, developments, nuclear weapon developments in, in China. There are so many new ICBM silos in the inner land of uh, China. And uh, uh, in the com uh, security community, uh, there is a growing concern about China's possible change in its nuclear strategy. 
from the minimum deterrence to the nuclear parity uh, with the United States. Because both US and Russia are legally binded by uh, the arms control you know, uh, uh, treaty. So the number of the missiles and nuclear warheads are controlled. It's a restraint. And this is a historic uh, opportunity for China. You know, they're slow, slowing down in the curve, at the curve. What China should do is speed up and overtake them. I think this is the current uh, uh, situation in, in China. Because transparency of the uh, China's military is extremely low. We don't know because China has never uh, declared its, uh, the number of, of its nuclear arsenals. We don't know. But based on the satellite photos and other uh, intelligence uh, available in the public, we can have this uh, judgment. Right? And also, it's systemic change, human rights violation, suppression on political freedom, assertive criticism against Western values. Uh, recently, China has uh, published a white paper on its China's uh, democracy and uh, uh, blaming a Western type of uh, you know, uh, democracy. Is, it's not a democracy at all, it's a hypocrisy. And uh, uh, China's uh, democracy is very good. Uh, human rights uh, has been uh, uh, you know, uh, greatly protected by uh, the, the, the Xi Jinping administration. And uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, Western world have, still have uh, a lot of racism. Yeah, that's true, maybe. But um, China is utilizing the criticism inside the Western world to justify themselves. And uh, this uh, trend is more and more uh, uh, clear, right? And in that kind of situation, all the power, interest, and value uh, in all these fields, China's challenge is growing. In this, this kind of situation, I think that US, uh, Sino-US strategic rivalry will uh, be maintained for a very long time. When, 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 when the country is seriously challenged, the country will become much more uh, energetic. So in that case, every field and every actor are linked with the rivalry between the United States and China. And Taiwan is the major front line. So I think that uh, abandon or defend, or well, I think that the, the course is going to be, uh, go, go, going to be the defense uh, direction. And now, recently, uh, Japan also makes a, a kind of a, a reassurance efforts. Now, uh, in uh, several months ago, uh, Japan's, uh, Japan's you know, government officials, you know, the, the premier, vice premier, uh, Taro Aso, and also vice defense minister, Yasuhide Nakayama, said, mentioned about the Japan's defense of Taiwan. And uh, uh, Taiwan contingency may be, may be applied as collective self-defense case. And I, I said, already said that th this is not the case, you know, but uh, they are doing this uh, for reassuring the Taiwanese people and also trying to deter China. Because if Japan may intervene, right? Uh, so this kind of uh, uh, discourse uh, was, was not mentioned uh, by the government uh, uh, officials before. But this year, uh, these discourses were, uh, these statements were uh, mentioned. And uh, Abe also made a very uh, strong message to China uh, for warning China. But the current government officials are silent, most, mostly silent about this. And, uh, using a very diplomatic and indirect uh, messages in public. But this is a kind of a, a, a division of labor. I think so. Uh, Abe is a strategic thinker. So he is uh, doing a, a kind of division of labor. So the 
former, as a former prime minister, he would send a very strong message to China. And uh, the current administration has to deal with the Sino-Japanese relations. It should be stable, right? And also have to strengthen the U.S.-Japan uh, alliance and try to uh, diversify its uh, security partner, such as UK, France, and other Australia and others, right? So Kishida administration should do these things in a very quiet manner, but other uh, politicians are doing uh, this. And other US allies also doing making efforts because, you know, this is very interesting. Oh, I have to finish uh, very quickly, right? Uh, this is going to be my uh, last part, you know. You know, China is facing a fundamental contradiction uh, when it, uh, for example, use of force against Taiwan. Because U.S. intervention is the, the biggest fear, if biggest risk. If there is only 1% of the risk of uh, U.S. intervention, China would not dare to attack Taiwan. Because uh, China cannot lose this war. If it loses this war, the Communist Party will lose its power. And uh, China will lose uh, the opportunity, strategic opportunity to, to develop itself. So to, to minimize or delete the risk of US intervention is the best thing. So you know, uh, using diplomatic measures and, and prevent US uh, intervening fr uh, from US intervening. But if China only attacks Taiwan, US forces on Japan will be no, uh, will never be harmed, right? The U.S. forces can do anything. So it means that it will give U.S. an opportunity to intervene in Taiwan. This is a huge contradiction. So there is another temptation and contradiction. If China is capable enough to damage and paralyze U.S. forces on Japan, on Korea, on Guam and Hawaii at the same time, for two or three weeks, then China can concentrate on you know, attacking Taiwan. But this is a crazy idea, insane idea. You know, what China fears is US intervention. You have to minimize this. But if you make a preemptive attack uh, on US forces, then the U.S. retaliation will be 100%. So this is a crazy idea. This is totally unacceptable. This is another Pearl Harbor, right? And in this situation, if U.K., France, and Australian vessels are also in this uh, you know, uh, area, China's war planner has to attack them at the same time because they are U.S. allies. And this is even more crazy. It's the World War III. Then the Chinese war planner and the uh, uh, political leader realized that, oh, stop this. You know, this is an extremely bad idea. China will lose everything. So China is deterred by this situation. You know? So uh, US and the allies uh, make a lot of efforts and deterrence is working. That's the current situation. So what we have to do is to maintain this deterrence as China enhances its capability. Other uh, allies, US and its allies, should enhance its capability and should, should enhance its cooperation in order to maintain the status quo and dissuade China to use military means. And on the other hand, prepare and show another choice, that is cost prosperity through, uh, through uh, economic cooperation, you know, trade, more trade, more you know, cooperation. You know. So in the past, uh, we said that uh, what is the China strategy, our China strategy? That's engagement and deterrence, in t engagement and hedge. But now it's vice versa, hedge and engagement, you know, denounce China to use military means to others and show them that there is another way, you know, uh, development, peaceful development is 
the, uh, the best ways, the best choice for China. Okay? So we need to send these kind of you know, uh, uh, messages to China. Well, this is uh, my talk. And I, I talked a lot. I'm really sorry and uh, uh, exceeded uh, my uh, time. But I, let me stop this, uh, my, my talk here, and I will uh, emulate your, your, uh, your you know, comments. Thank you.